Now we are here. <laughs> we are here because I have bought, and yeah, this is just a box because I've already unboxed it, um, a Tuxedo actual Linux laptop. Just so you know, even though I do review the Tuxedo Stellaris laptop in this video, this is not strictly a review video. I do drift into other topics at points. Also, to excuse the intro audio, I forgot to turn on the microphone, so I had to pinch the built-in mic audio from the secondary camcorder. PCBWay have now become a one-stop solution. Other than doing high-quality PCB boards, they now do CNC services as well as 3D printing. If, like myself, you're into doing electronics projects and require PCBs, then do check out their services on their website. Those of you who do not know, I'm more of a Linux person than a, you know, a Windows or Apple person. Um, but the recent advancement of Linux has kind of made me able to actually use it more. Like, for example, things like video editing um, and photo editing. So, yeah. What are you doing here? <laughs> the recent pickup with it, well, when I say recent, I mean in recent years. Uh, the recent pickup of Linux, you know, has been quite encouraging for me. And I've always, it's always been an alternative I've wanted to use. Let's say I've not felt entirely comfortable with, uh, well, Windows for a long time, uh, but OS X. Now, I haven't boxed this like over a week ago. I got about this for two weeks now and I've had quite a journey with this laptop. Uh, so I want to kind of like share and I've, I've been, this is my downtime on uh, YouTube as well. I've been posting videos and you know, there's a number of reasons, but anyway, by the way, this is not what I normally do. If you're new to my channel and if you're from the Linux community and so forth and you wanted to know all this stuff, I don't normally do Linux videos. So this is kind of a one-off or maybe a two-off or, <laughs> you know, um, because, you know, I use, Linux a lot. I'm just taking you through my setup process. Anyway, so you get these posters. I mean, it's all right, but it's not my kind of a poster. It's, it's very, it makes a lot of statements there. Use GIMP instead of Photoshop. Use uh, Inkscape instead of, I mean, it feels more like a pamphlet than, <laughs> than a poster to be honest. <laughs> a poster would be something a bit more artistic than this in my opinion. <laughs> That's not my type of poster, but nonetheless, thank you so much. Tuxedo. I mean, by the way, I saved up for this and bought it myself. Did not send me, you know, something to review. This did not send me this review or anything like this. I've been saving up this for a, a, quite a couple of years, quite a couple of years now. Well, it comes with cute mouse mat. Tuxedo one or tux one. Now this, you know, it's a USB SD card reader. It doesn't come with it. This is an extra which I put in, uh, but everything else does. I mean, this comes with tuxedo on USB drive. The moment, the first time I tried this, I was literally a bit lost because I'm used to Gnome. <laughs> Gnome. I have stupid names for everything in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> so with KDE, comes with a nice pen, tuxedo one. KDE, all right. You can customize it. It's got like so much customization, right? Uh, literally everything you've got, thingy, but it's just, I didn't like the way it looks like Windows. I'm probably sure you can customize that too. <laughs> Comes with a nice uh, tuxedo branded, not bad. Nice. An instruction manual, and it is completely 100% in German. <laughs> now here is the laptop itself. It even has the tuxedo logo there, you can actually choose um, what logo to have there. You can actually custom build like what specs you want on the actual um, site itself. So this, it has um, two USB 3 ports, it has an SD card port, perfect, just what I need. It has um, audio input, output, another USB port on this side, and on the back it has, we have the AC adapter in, or the charger. <laughs> I'm old school, okay? I still call them AC adapters. We have um, uh, LAN here, wired LAN. Uh, we have the HDMI out, uh, to well, display out, HDMI out. And we have a USB-C out, which perfect, you know, for a dock or anything else you want to connect. 
and here we have the port for the Aquarius. Now Aquarius is the actual external water cooling. You know, it's the pump there and you just connect it to this and it water cools it. So you can like put this up at, you know, high performance. So if, if you're like doing something like uh, heavy gaming or heavy editing, things like that. I know I'm gonna, I do a lot of things like audio editing, video editing, so forth. So I decided to kind of like future proof this, you know, and like, um, because I don't like getting things and like replacing things sorely. This is actually the first major laptop I've bought myself since 2007. The rest of them have just been like secondhand jobs or things like that or just makeshift ones. This is like I've put my thought into it. I've actually um, selected the spec that I want and have a decent system that can that will last me for like, you know, I know myself for like another 10 years or something like this at least. Now, whenever a company has sent me something to review, whether it be the Lapal or the Unijoy or the SidFX or, you know, the SSD S3, I still have to be honest with it. I have to be completely transparent because I'm a very detailed oriented person. And if something is not up to scratch, it does bug me. So yeah, I'm more sort of like that if, <laughs> if I'm conscious of having paid. So I'm gonna kind of like, anything that bothers me, I'm just gonna, as I always do, mention it. All right, you've seen what ports and everything this has. Now, the back of this, it's plastic, but it's a good plastic, right? It's quite sturdy. It's built really well. It's got a good weight to it. I know people like lightweight things, but for me, I like there to be a little bit of weight because I know that a little bit of weight equals a good chassis. The top part is metallic. The screen bit's a bit thin. I know that's normal and people are wanting slim laptops and things like that. But I'm used to like having a MacBook Pro. <laughs> and um, the thing is, it can bow a bit, so I have to be careful with the screen. I just feel it's very delicate. Maybe it's because I'm not used to it. Many years of using a MacBook Pro and it's like, you know, it's, got, it's thicker, of course. The keyboard, I have to say, has to probably be on a laptop the best I've used. Now, it's a... I almost called it a mag magneto-optical, but that's mini <laughs> technology. <laughs> but it's optomechanical, right? Which means it's a mechanical keyboard, but it uses light, yeah? To like make and break the contact. So each key press, it's actually a light shining and it, it, you're breaking the beam of light. Only thing is a bit funny about it. Yeah, it does have a numpad, but the trackpad is not exactly center. And that kind of bugs me a bit. Um, you get used to it, because <laughs> Rich says it's a bit, when you type it, it's a bit. But you do kind of, you do get used to it. It's just, it feels weird. Laptops with the trackpad shifted to one side do feel a bit strange to me. Again, I'm coming from one which has always been centered. So this is like an edit-in, just to be a bit more clear about things. And uh, yeah, it's Mighty from the future. And as you can see, I've already stuck my stickers on it. <laughs> And not just this exclusive to this laptop, but seems to be a lot of them. Rich's is laptops like Rich's laptops like this as well, and I've come across many others. Down facing speakers. Why? Why is that a thing? It's so annoying. It's just muffled sound. Down facing speakers. Stop it. It's annoying. I'm sorry, but it really is. Yeah? You've got enough space on top of here or at the sides or anything. Just buy down. Also, no hard drive LED. That bugs me, yeah? I'm old school. I like stuff that's old school. I was brought up with Amigas and things like this, right? I got the MacBook um, Pro. That's the first thing that didn't have a hard drive light and it did my freaking brain in because I was just, I always look at the hard drive activity light. All in all, I like the port set out at the back. Just the power in is a little, mm, why is it all over here? I mean, if it was that other... I'm gonna pick up this thing, right? Because I spent freaking years saving for this. So I'm gonna pick up it. SD card stock, absolutely love it. USBs, absolutely love it. I think there, should, there needs to be another 3.2 USB, and that would've been there. But you know, that's just me. Other than what I've just mentioned, um, the only other thing that bugs me, this has been marketed as a Linux laptop, right? And it is, but it only seems, they only seem to support Ubuntu fully out the box, yeah? I prefer Fedora, Fedora is my favorite. I like 
I've, uh, I've distra hopped stupid amount of times, yeah, in such a short amount of time, and it's done my brain in. I still stand by my thing. Fedora is the best for me, personally. But I'll elaborate more on that situation a little later on in this video, since right now I'm just going through the features of the laptop. Also, just so you know, I'm not a Linux YouTuber. I'm not going to start doing Linux videos or anything like that. I'm more into old school tech and creativity, as a lot of you know, but I use Linux as a tool. And with so much of my time lately in this past couple of months involved in it, invested in it, I thought why not share with you a lot of what's been going on. There are other Linux YouTubers which rich watches now and then. I don't know the YouTube Linux scene that much and from what I know the ones that stick out to me are DistroTube who seems to know his stuff and seems quite down to earth with it. I quite appreciate that actually. And also Gardner Brian. It's got a hardware button for a tuxedo control center, which controls the, you know, you have the different profiles on uh, the power, this, you know, the, um, what do you call it? The power options. If you want the performance high or low, if you want the CPU to, you can even choose how many cores you want it to use, you know, depending on which profile. I've created three profiles, one for the battery, one for the mains, and one for like full blown, everything is on, everything is on full power if I ever need it. So you can just switch between them mid task. You know, standard stuff really, but... Now then, I get the impression that these th this laptop is predominantly for like Tuxedo OS or any Ubuntu based, you know, OS or Debian, right? Linux distros, right? Oh my God, in the space of 24 hours, I have gone from Tuxedo OS, which came with it, it's still on this, I can put it on whenever I want, but I don't want it. <laughs> Tuxedo OS, which is KDE Ubuntu based. I've gone to Fedora, and I realized that the freaking backlight didn't work on it. And I really need that. Even though I used to turn it on in the BIOS, right? It just goes to the OS, works for like a little while, you know, but it just doesn't stay, it, like it turns off at some point, and then you just like, Anyway, because I'm used to Fedora the most, right? And then I went from uh, that to Pop OS. Uh, Pop OS, I like it, but it just feels like a cut down Fedora to me because there's certain things that I'm looking for and they're not there. It's like a modified Juggernaut. <laughs> that, I mean, is nice. Pop OS is nice, but it, it's going into a direction I'm, I don't think I'm gonna like. And then I went back to Fedora trying to sort out. Uh, no, I didn't go to Fedora, I went to Garuda right? Or Geruda, however you pronounce this. I fell in love with the Geruda, yeah? The way it looks, the way it's arch-based. The way it looks, I think it's arch-based. can't remember now, my head smashed. Go through all these freaking distros, yeah? Um, Rich just watched me go through all of this chaos, just sat there, just like, shaking his head. And, <laughs> but I went through, I went through, up into Geruda, I, I felt heartbroken, right? Because the look of Geruda, I fell in love with. It's so beautiful, right? But it's an a-hole to use. It's an absolute a-hole, right? It almost feels like a hacker. It's hacker's OS. So I, I just, I couldn't get DaVinci Resolve, which is what I use now. I'm starting to use for video editing. I couldn't get that working properly, right? With the NVIDIA play, uh, drivers playing up uh, as well with it, and it was just like... And everything else, it was just like, for every single little thing you needed to do, you, you wanted to do, you needed to faff around with it, and you needed to keep asking Rich. He enjoyed the ride without the stress, yeah? I had to kind of tear away from that and then finally install Ubuntu, right? I'm still teetering on Fedora, <laughs> like whether to install it back or not, but to be honest, I've stayed on Ubuntu here. I've got Fedora installed on my the, um, computer, which uh, is actual desktop computer, which I used initially, the Hack Hackendosh one, uh, for video editing. So I've got an extra install of Fedora there. And um, I had a freaking migraine after it all, and I'm pretty sure all you um, Linux enthusiasts out there, you've been through a similar distro hopping. I'm not doing it ever again. It comes with this freaking brick, yeah? 
<laughs> this flat brick, but it's a brick. Uh, it's got no LED on it to indicate that it's on, and that's annoying to me. No LED on. I want. What's with these lack of? You're not saving that much energy. No LED on it. No sort of like. It's plugged in indicator. I can understand it being a brick because it's Nvidia graphics in there, and it's got like a Intel i i9. And this is another thing about this. This thing is loose and it doesn't plug in properly. You push it in as far as you can and it wiggles and it still kind of like sometimes just disconnects as if it's not, it's not able to go in. I checked in there to see if there's any, you know, anything stopping it or obstructing it, but no. It's just the how it is. When you've spent this much on a laptop, these things matter. Heck, even if you haven't spent this much on a laptop, these things matter. Easy solution, uh, which I shouldn't have to do, but easy solution is get another cord. Now the screen here, it's bright, but not as bright as, you know, others, uh, but it's bright enough. I have to say the screen's actually quite beautiful. I think it's, I don't think it's quite a 4K screen, but it's, I think it's like a 3K screen. The screen is beautiful, it's IPS of course, and uh, you know, you have your, the usual controls, volume up and down, and you just turn the trackpad on and off by double tapping over here. And it doesn't work when you're trying to show somebody, <laughs> but it's nice. I like it. I like the trackpad itself. You can, you know, select, you can configure it how you want. Of course, that's how Linux is. You know, it was specially made for Linux. Even though, you know, you can install Windows on it or anything like that, but it just feels like completely wrong to do that. You just, I bought this for Linux. And um, to be honest, I'm enjoying using it so far. Um, I've got my uh, KiCad, FreeCAD uh, stuff. I have you know, the DaVinci Resolve, I have GIMP and I have Darktable, things like that. So I've got everything for photography. I've even got FSUA for Amiga stuff and, you know, lots of other things which I need to still put on and <laughs> still need to do that. I've got my Minecraft uh, here, which works absolutely beautifully with like, you know, RTX shaders and, you know, obviously I'm going to show you that later, right? <laughs> um, but that is, that is something that I'm just happy about. I can just like, when I'm, things get too much, I can just escape into my beautiful Minecraft world which I've created. When you distro help, even though it's a headache and you've come out of it and you've like, you've, you've recovered from the migraine and the, the, the stress of it all and everything, right? You come out of it after about a week or two weeks um, or depending on how bad your distro hopping session has, uh, period has been and uh, you know, how long it takes to recover after that. I'm kind of glad I did it because I've experienced quite a few things. Other than um, Ubuntu and Fedora, uh, I experienced Pop! OS, I experienced, um, yeah, Geruda, Geruda. I'm still in love with it, how it looks, but looks on everything clearly because it did my freaking brain in and I had to just leave. <laughs> the relationship was over. <laughs> yes, divorce. That looks a very little to do with it. You need to connect. You need to have a social connection with 
you know, your OS. Right, so right now what I want to do is I'm going to like sort out all my storage. Before shutting it down, let's take a backup of it, like update, because I'm using uh, time shift for backups. And I've set time shift to do like a complete backup, like everything, home directory, everything, right? All right, so snapshot created, which is back. Carry on. I've been telling them about my kind of my journey, adventure, distro hopping. How many in like 24 hours? And how much fun I've been having. How much fun I've been having watching this? Yeah, I bet you have. <laughs> you you managed to do like you've done more distro hopping than I have in 20 years. <laughs> One week. Plus we've learned. I've learned big lessons. This is one thing I'll, I'll say, right, about my experience with Tuxedo computers. Everything on the website just feels like, you know, straightforward. You can design your laptop, let it know what CPU you want, what GPU you want, what, how much RAM and storage and, you know, uh, all that. You know, you can design it just as you, as you want it and they build it for you. And this one, right, on mine, it said that it's ready, it's in, everything's in stock and it's ready to ship within two weeks, yeah? So I was expecting that. I was expecting to get it within a month or something like that, right? Um, and, but the problem is, I ordered this in like November, yeah? And it arrived in like, at some point in January, early January. I don't know when this is gonna be released, but right now it's, it's like two weeks ago-ish. And yeah, I could have had a little warning with the, about, about the delays. Uh, they said the main thing, it wasn't in stock and so forth. So if you are ordering from Tuxedo computers, right, give yourself some, I mean, I'm not saying that they will always um, delay on this thing. Maybe it's just my bad luck, right? But I was expecting it to be shipped within two weeks. It ended up being more like two months or something like this, right? ish so give yourself that expectation time i mean i do a lot of a lot of stuff on my laptop i do a lot of my all my creativity stuff all my work stuff all my you know everything that i do on on these computers and um you know running this channel i kind of like so i i was i felt a bit held back by it you know i had to use a makeshift system and that was a bit annoying if you're gonna get this give yourself a little bit of a backup you know expect it to be a little bit later than it is. Who knows? You might get it within the two weeks or however time frame they say, or whatever time frame they say. Right. So initially, because it's got two SSD NVMe slots, I wanted to max it out as much as I could. As much as I could. I hadn't saved up for it, so I didn't, you know, put it as an option. But in this like two months period, saved up a little bit more and decided to kind of like get myself. But I, I've got just one terabyte in there, right? And that's. I want to expand that because I do a lot of video editing, I do a lot of creativity work, I do like, you know, CAD stuff, things like this. So it's just, it's just I'm going to need a lot of storage space on this, plus external storage. I just bought this laptop, I'm going to open it out and I think it's going to be easy because it's quite modular. And um, yeah, I'm a crazy biatch for doing this, but this is what I do on my channel. I open things up and I, you know, sort things out. I'm not afraid of going inside. I've built computers before, so you know, it's not like it's alien to me or anything. But it seems to be, and I think these are designed to be modular, so you can just like very easily. It looks quite nice and airy in there, which is um, which is what you want. These all actually seem to be the same size, even though I am segregating them, as I not really do anyway. Okay, I think these three screws here you have to also, well again, I'll segregate them, even though I think they are the same size. There we go, straight away. I saw them, the NVMe slots here. Right, so as you can see, I have one terabyte here and that's the, the actual, um, the only drive in here. So it's got one in installed. So what I had done before this laptop even arrived is, um, just before it arrived, is I bought one of these and uh, I bought an enclosure for it and I put like a you know, two terabyte 
external. So what I'm gonna do is take the two terabyte out of here, put it in there, and this new one here. Uh, use that, put that in the main drive, in the, the first slot, right? And this one terabyte here, use that as the external storage, so you can, you know, to, to transfer. So I've got one terabyte here to transfer files between computers, so the whole four terabytes in here. All right, so first things first, now that that's backed up, these can be a bit of a pain to put in, especially with that thermal putty stuff, because you have to make things flush. These NVMe drives, SSDs, get very hot. So he's got a, a rubber thing holding it in place instead of a screw that you screw in. And that's a nine, because if you drop this, you know, wouldn't it just... Because this has got stuff on it already. It's got the uh, backup and you know, my files. So what I'm gonna do is put this in the second slot. That's the um, boot drive. So put this in the second slot. Now this comes with the looks of it. Like this needs a thermal compound, right? Where it closes in the, the top case of the drive. That's the thermal compound here. So what I probably have to do Again, I've not done this too much on Linux, but what I'll probably have to do is um, do a fresh install of Ubuntu, install Time Shift, and just like restore the snapshot. We have the boot drive here. There we go, happily sitting in there, brand new, and ready to be used. Slot, slot one. And not need to open it up ever again. That is done, that is in properly. Both of the slots have got 980 pros, two terabytes each, four terabytes total. Fantastic, now let's close this up. <laughs> Thirsty work, I need some tea. <laughs> Again, I do not recommend doing this if you don't know what you're doing, right? You know your level of skill with regards to doing stuff like this, right? So you gauge that yourself. I'm not, I don't want to encourage anyone to do this. I mean, I've done this quite a fair bit. So I have the experience. Back in the day, I, I, I built my own PC and built it for friends and then uh, pretended that I didn't know anything about computers after that because every freaking idiot started asking me, can you build a computer for me? Right, there we go. Let's power this up. Right, so as you can see here, Samsung NVMe device controller, Samsung in each one, two terabytes in each one. Perfect, it all works. And let's put what was originally the um, one terabyte boot drive device into this thing now. So this, what I'm, this is the one terabyte drive, which I will transfer files to and fro the um, computer upstairs. I don't really like cloud systems. I don't care what people say. Me personally, I don't like them. If you like them, that's all fine. I've had people rah 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 at me for not liking cloud systems. Um, <laughs> you know, trying to prove that they're good. I'm like, okay, if you want to use one, you use it, right? But me not liking cloud systems, uh, or me not liking cloud concept shouldn't threaten you <laughs> or your use of it. You know what I mean? It's just my opinion. So, that little bit off my chest. <laughs> we, I use these kind of stuff, and you know, to be honest, you know, everything's offline, everything's perfect. That's how I like it. Right, so somewhere in my tin of SD cards and USB drives, <laughs> there's a Ubuntu um, installer. I'm not sure which one it is. Um, I think it's this one. No, this is installing Fedora. <laughs> no, this is not Ubuntu. I need Ubuntu. Is this a sign that I install Fedora? <laughs> Freaking distro hopping. <laughs> yeah, Ubuntu. <laughs> now, this may take a while, so I'll just like, you know. Ooh. Stuff is happening. 
Right, anyway, while that happens in the background, I'll just, you know, show you what I'll do um, with regards to this. So we have um, one two terabyte drive. It's going to be the boot drive and the home directory and everything that's going to have a lot of space there. Right, and then you have the two terabyte storage drive in there, right? One terabyte external drive here. This um, three gigabyte, three gigabyte, three terabyte um, mechanical hard drive. And this, again, another one that I can use to transfer, but it's a mechanical hard drive. So what I'm going to do is just use it as like a backup of the um, video files and all that. Same with this. Um, there's this old school iOmega, uh, which looks like a flask which I have is a USB 2 one, so it's very slow. Um, it's only like 500 gigs, so I've just stored my photography backups on this. So yeah, that's my on-the-go working drives. You are in emergency mode after logging in the type drone to view system. Right, so the time shift uh, restoration, that did not work out. For some reason, every time I did it, maybe it's because I was doing it from one drive to another, even though I changed the UUID and I altered that, it still just did not want to work. No matter what I did, it just didn't want to work. I didn't even change any, any other setting or anything like this, but it decided to stop working. So the install just got goofed up, right? Now, I think it's a sign, right? Even though I'm not saying Ubuntu is bad, it's just not for me. And it prompted me to give Fedora another try with this. And after like 24 hours of headache, <laughs> another 24 hours of headache, I managed to get it going. Everything, for anyone who's got a Stellaris, a tuxedo Stellaris, right, who wants Fedora on it, yes, I know, the, it's not out the box, the um, support, but I'm gonna link everything you need in the, in the description below, well, to get it working, I think, as, um, as well as I have so far. The backlight works. And it stays on, thankfully. And um, I've got Tuxedo Control Center over here. It doesn't work. It doesn't come up when you press that, even though it should. The actual um, button for it. Now the first thing that came installed with this was Tuxedo OS, right? And that comes with this. Now I had to take that off because it's KDE based. And uh, I'm even though I'm the type who you think would jump on KDE um, with like so much you can customize and, and all that. There's something about it I just really didn't like. Which got me used to GNOME and um, I got used to that and I ended up getting used to it. We tried Pop OS, each of us, and then, you know, Pop OS was nice, but then we tried Fedora after that. Yeah, I much prefer Fedora and so to see. It's our favorites. I wanted to put Fedora on there and that's the one thing which it kind of did not have support for at the box, even though I emailed Christian from Tuxedo and uh, Tuxedo Computers, and he said, uh, oh, it works with Fedora out the box. Yeah, of course it works. You install Fedora on anything and it'll work. And yeah, the keyboard and all, it goes, oh, you need with the keyboard. The backlight didn't work. You cannot view it without the backlight. Very easy. You have to read like, constantly going like this if you want to see a specific key. Christian said you can just press the function button. Well, that was I call it the fun button. <laughs> button and the space bar and that turns the backlight on yeah sure that does and it did work but the thing is it kept turning itself off and you have to keep turning it on and sometimes you turned it on and it instantly turned itself off so you have to keep like doing it and it just kept turning itself it's like fighting with you and that's really it got me so frustrated yeah and uh, so they needed to be full-on proper support on it so that's why I hesitatingly installed Ubuntu and I went through all these distros to avoid in installing Ubuntu. Um, Rich was just like, so what is it you got against Ubuntu? I was like, I don't really have anything against it. I'm just Fedora that I liked. And he understood because he likes Fedora as well. And um, yeah, I talked it out of session. <laughs> anyway. Now to somewhat get some support on fit with Fedora, you have to jump through quite a few hoops. Yeah, you have to jump through a lot of hoops. I went, and uh, we went, Rich and I both, we went searching for RPM files on the keyboard drivers and all the drivers and all that. And it just seemed to find Debian files or just like anything. And there was lots of people who said out the box, there is not really any support for Fedora. Um, and people th saying that you should do support the main distros, not just Ubuntu, don't, you know, because every time, right, I had something not work or something not supported, that little niggling voice 
kept saying in my mind. Yeah, but you're a Linux laptop. Yeah, exactly. It's a Linux laptop. Even Christian suggested going into copper and also trying to find it there. But the copper is like people's own, you know, user own created um, driver and stuff. So you have to use them at your own risk. It's like when I went to Garuda, uh, I was trying that. You have to use the AUR packages to find all these to, for Tuxedo. And someone out there has obviously made one, but AUR has got that same risk. You know, use it at, at your own risk. It could mess everything up. So, as far as I know. So, uh, but this is like just a kind of a bit of an update on what I've been up to and what I've been doing and my, you know, workflow and, and, and all that a little bit, just to kind of give it a bit. Because I get a lot of questions like, oh, what editing software do you use? What do you use? I used to use uh, Final Cut Pro and Hackintosh, right? Until now. Now I use DaVinci Resolve here on my Linux laptop. And it's like, it's, yeah, it's some getting used to. I'm not gonna go into the in, ins and outs of it and all that, but it takes some getting used to, but yeah. To kind of like switch over, but it's a big, huge switch over. I have to think about this differently to Final Cut Pro. There's a few things you do differently, but you know, I'm enjoying it so far. And yes, I decided to go whole hog and go like that because kid in life, okay, as, as nice as it is and all that, but it just feels like it cannot do what I want it to do. I mean, it does the basics and it's really good for that. But for the sort of things that I do on video editing uh, uh, software is, I can only find it in DaVinci Resolve. I don't think video editing on um, open source uh, Linux has gone that far yet. So I bit the bullet, saved up, and went for DaVinci Resolve. Hello and welcome. Now we are here. And DaVinci Resolve for me works beautifully. I just need to get used to it a bit more so I, I, I don't like use it at the speed of a tortoise at the moment. <laughs> it's just like it feels like workflow has gone really slow now <laughs> because I'm just like getting used to everything. It's, yeah, it takes quite some time to kind of like switch software and learn, relearn things. It's the unlearning that's the part that gets you, but... But I echo the same sentiment of these guys on the forum. Please, please, please make support, you know, have this support. More distros than just like Debian or Ubuntu based. You know, I, I would like to see more support for Fedora. I'm a strong support for Fedora, not just like finding bits of drivers here and there just to get something to work. I managed to get things to work. I mean, uh, the backlight, I got it working now. Um, I don't know exactly which one I use. I installed like two, three <laughs> different ones uh, because one of them, it worked for a bit and then turned itself off and uninstalled itself when you reboot it. And then the next one, it kind of worked, but then just didn't. So the third one, I'm not sure which ones started it working <laughs> properly. <laughs> so it was a bit nuts. Um, I managed to get Tuxedo Control Center, as you saw earlier on. So yeah, I got that. So it's working. As it should, I mean, some things don't entirely work that the switch here, I'm mean, actually the switch here does work. It's just the LED doesn't come on. I'm not saying Tuxedo OS is bad, yeah? It's just not for me. I'm not really, I've discovered after using it, I'm not a KDE person. That is all for today. Thanks so much for your likes. Please leave your thoughts in the comments below and do share my channel and videos with your friends. Also, a big thank you goes to my patrons for your support and kindness, especially to my top tier patrons. Rich Garbett, Axel Dominator, Electronscape UK, Michael Monjour, Aaron Metcalf, Corey Ostman, Starglider77, Mark Bosak, Starlight Minako, Chris Sablansky, and Veronica. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Until next time, adios!